All right, Steve. So today I'm going to be your coach. And basically, I want you to just clear your mind of everything and just listen to what I said, okay? So your ability is dictated based on how open shots you can get for yourself and others. So if they're not really open, then you're not a killer player. Because the moment something lacks and then they can't get the shots off clearly anymore, then they can't play at the highest level anymore, okay? So everything is based on how open can you get for yourself and for all your teammates. So when it comes to being a point guard, I want you to always think, how many times can I get into the lane so that the defense collapses? Because even if you can get open mid ranges for yourself, you want to make, be able to make the defense collapse so that you can get your teammates involved early. So, so just just think about that mindset of being able to just go all the way to the basket at any time you want. Okay. So we we gonna we gonna start with that. But um, that's just that's just kind of like the the thing that I want you to always have every time you like come to the court. Open teammates, open shots for myself. And then how many times? Because that just shows your aggressiveness. Because even if you're passing balls out here, really, since you're a smaller guard, you gotta be able to get into the lane and like destroy people. Okay, so that's just offense. But right now, we gonna start with some basics. Okay. So basically, it's gonna be like one ball handling drill, stationary. It's just like a warm up. But I want you to look up. I want you to dribble as hard as you can, as fast as you can. Get in an explosive stance. So we're gonna just go here. Work on the hands, high as you can. All right, low, really low. And switch. High. Low. Okay, that shit was amazing. That handles that he has is amazing. Everything that I told him, he did it. All right, so now we gotta do bees. High, high. There you go. See, when you lose it, it should go all the way there. That means he's dribbling with a lot of force. There you go. Look up, look up, look up. Look at that camera. There you go, there you go. There you go. Go, go, go. All right, left hand. V, to the waist. Look up, look up, look up. High, high, high. High as you can. Just work on the hands. All right, low, low, low.
way. Sell it, sell it, sell it. More, more, more hesitation right at the hang dribble, hang dribble. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hang it, hang it out. Act like you're really gonna go and then and then cross. Hang it out. Yeah. More crisp, more crisp and more speed. There you go. Dribble it hard, dribble it hard. There you go. There you go. There you go. Alright, between the between the back. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go. Get low, get low, get low. That's it, that's it, that's it, that's good, that's good. Stop, stop, stop. Now we're gonna do this. In and out cross. Faster on the cross, faster on the in and out. Yeah, like that. Believe you're gonna go, sell the fake. There you go. All right, back, back, back. Now left hand, in and out, cross. Lower on the in and out. Yeah, yeah. So sell it more with your body in. Believe you're going to go like this, like this. So I'm really thinking you're, I'm going to go there, and then when they fall for it, then you go the other way. Yeah. There you go, there you go, there you go. Alright, let's go, let's go. Alright, so now we're going to do this. Alright, we're going to do two balls. Go higher again, just to work on the hands. Seven, eight, five, six, seven. There you go. Now really low, really low. There you go, there you go, there you go. Higher. That's good. Yeah. Oh, go, 
Let's go, let's go, let's go. Just a couple more times, that's it. A couple more times. Right, let's go, let's go, let's go. So that was just basic warm up, get the ball handling going. Now we go to moving ball handling with one, one ball. All right, so we're gonna start here, and then we just gonna go straight into the half court, all right? So one hand, let's go. It's about being having the threat of the drive every single time you dribble. So it's like I might go, 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 but I'm not go. So you gonna have the threat of the drive, but you don't actually go. Alright, let's go any way you want. Straight up. God, I'm not, I'm not threatened by the explosion. Yeah, yeah. you're taking steps, the more the defense has to shift to you. Because if you're just here, relying on pure explosiveness, that you're moving while you're dribbling and shifting your feet, they have to slide a lot more than you. It's hard to jump up backwards a lot more. All right, so take steps while you're dribbling. Like that, like that. Yeah. Let's 
What you gonna do next? Same concept, but with two balls. But we gonna go straight. As fast as you can, as hard as you can. There you go, good, 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 good. Yeah, yeah. That's what I'm talking about. All right. Now I want you to do one move while going straight. Maybe switch it every two dribbles. Creativity. Yeah. There you go. Go straight, go straight, go straight. Straight line. Straight line, straight line, straight line. There you go, there you go. Now we're going to do this. We're going to switch directions. Like that. There you go, Steve. Nice and low, nice and low. There you go, there you go, there you go. That's it. That's just the basic warm up for ball handling. Get the body going a little bit. Come on, that's it. You know, uh, so it's like, like I talked about, ability to get wide open shots for yourself. You know, there's the full game. So when you're like trying out and stuff, I want you to keep in mind that if you can get to the basket, you can get to the gate every at will. They're gonna remember it because they're gonna be like, you can break down the defense at any time. So, so when, when you do these drives, I want you to do it as fast as you can and finish as fast as you can, as high as you can, elevate as high as you can, try to get one, one arm to the backboard type of thing. And then um, we're going to do those and then we're going to do um, like floaters or runners at full speed. And then we're also going to do like the quick layup with the keyboard to help get there. So just like a step early, you're going to do that. So those are the four things that we're going to work on. Okay. So I want you to just... Uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna swing the ball to you, okay? So you're the point guard, so you just pass it to somebody. Now, I pass it back, go all the way. There you go, I'm gonna try to go higher, a little bit higher, and go faster. All right, so that's one. Fast as you can go. There you go, there you go, there you go, there you go. All right, left hand now, left hand. Go. That's good, that's good speed. That was the best one. Good speed, good speed. I want you to do like swing, and I want you to like scoop it up, like off step before the help defender can get there. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. All ready? Yeah. I'm the help defender, okay? So you got, I'm, I'm gonna be here, okay? Ready? Let's go. If he can do it, he doesn't need to do it a thousand times. Work on other things now. Uh, so basically, knowledge is power. 
And that's why basketball IQ matters. So, we're going to discuss pick and roll right now, okay? Pick and roll is huge for point guards. And when we watch the coaches play, they space the floor better. That's 100% true. So, it's going to be like this. We're always thinking about how can I get my teammate or myself a wide open layup or a wide open shot, right? So that means that when you're running pick and roll, all the other players always have to be in the right position so that it's not clogged, okay? So when you're on the wing here, always think two-man game first. Because if it's two-man game on just this side, that means that his chances of getting a wide open layup is way higher. So whenever you go into any, any trial or anything like that, you're going to be brave and you're going to be like, that way, that way, that way, that way. Just if you're at the top of the key, what's the key to running a very dangerous pick and roll? Two players in the corners. If they're here and they're there, the help defender's gotta be here, help defender's gotta be there, which means that you have all this space to operate in. Okay? So basically we're gonna do this. We're gonna do a drill where you have the ball on the on the wings and then you're gonna call pick and roll. And then you gotta tell your four men to come and pick, but then you gotta tell your three and two. Corner and wing right there. Corner and wing right there. And then the five men, it's okay if he hangs in the paint, but if he can shoot, then he can be out there too. So, so basically, this drill is where you have to talk. You gotta talk because if you wanna win any situation in your end, you're gonna go there, you're gonna talk. And, and you just gotta do it with the winning mindset and they're gonna, they're gonna follow you. You're a leader. Okay. All right. So let's let's start at the let's start at the left wing. Yeah. All right. Stay there. Don't don't move behind there. So I'm your teammate. I'm right here. Where do, I, where do you tell me to go? Are you trying to run a pick and roll here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which yeah. side, which side, which side? Yeah, yeah, that corner. Yeah, It's so huge and it works. 100% it works. Alright, so let's say your teammates are right here. And you're trying to run a one side pick and roll and everybody else clear out on the perimeter. So this is a two man game in the top of the key. Yeah. So where do you tell each player to go? One five, kick to the corner. One five, and one five. Where's the other guy go? Yeah, corner, corner, corner. And then where's the where's the one other big man go? Where a big man? Yeah. Yeah, where you can go, uh, go right here. Go yeah. Stretch five. You'll call him a stretch five. Okay, so you just have that, but just make sure you always just communicate that. Go. There, they're gonna be around here all the time. Then you tell them corner, corner, and then what do you do if this help defender comes to you because? You gotta pass that shit right away. Pass it right away to those guys. It happens. They're gonna be like, oh, oh, he's trying to run this pick. And then you're gonna be like, then you just boom. And when you're running that, you know, they're paying attention to you. Tell them the baseline cut. That's something you gotta tell your teammates. You gotta be like, or you gotta just tell them in the timeout. Okay? So, Alright, so let's run it. So uh, everybody's all over the place. Tell them where each to go. Go. And then what about the other guy? The other, the other, the other three, the other corner. Two corners. Yeah, yeah. The, the guards, the 
corners, and then the big, maybe yeah, yeah, yeah. And the big, the, the one other big can sit in the paint, because yeah. then you can drop the dime off. Yeah. Because, yeah. But if you can shoot, then you can be out here. So, then it's a real two-man game. Yeah. Okay? All right. So tell everyone where to go. Tell your two, your three, uh -huh. and your four where to go. Two and three to the corner. Three Two to the three. wing. Alright. So five, five is here. It's okay. Yeah. It's here. Okay. Oh, one five, one five. One five, one five. Okay. There you go. There you go. Just take a sit. Alright. Now show me you know everything now. Yeah. From the wing and the top of the key. Tell every player where to go. Uh, so you're the one. Uh -huh. So you want to tell two and three where to go. On the wings. On the wing here. And then you want to tell each position where to go. On top of the key. One five, one five. Two and three to the corners. Four, four to the wing. Four to the wing. He went, he went. Alright, so one's coming. One's coming. There you go. Alright, now let's try down the wings. Hold on, hold on. The other way, the other way. Alright, go, go, go. So where do you want each player? Tell each player which position. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ha ha ha. You got to direct the Okay. And then what about three? What about three, the three? Three, stay, 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 stay. Three, stay, stay there? Yeah. Okay, okay. Five. Five, five. Where's four, though? Where's four? On the other side. On the other side, right there. Okay. Okay. So, so I want you to understand, as, as a small guard, people have to fear your drive, the basket. They have to be very scared. And the more scared they are, with your skills and your ability to shoot off the dribble, the more of a great player you'll be. Because it's about them fearing your drive, allowing you to get what you want at an open, open shot rate. Meaning, the, the better you can get to the basket, the quicker and all that stuff, the more they're going to, you know, fear the threat of your drive, so the more space you'll have for every shot and also to pass everything. So, so I want you to keep that in mind when you're making these moves, because these moves are kind of like a way to separate yourself from the defender. So we're going to just start with the basics, because it's rare for a player to be like a Kyrie where they take multiple dribbles because there's only 24 seconds. So so you can dribble a decent amount as a point guard, but like that many moves usually it, like it's it, it doesn't work unless you're like a Kyrie player that can just isolate on the way. Yeah, okay. So my point is if you look at like Isaiah Thomas, like he'll catch and go, or he'll just take a couple dribbles and make like move wise and then go. Okay. So we're gonna start with this. We're gonna start with the reaction time go. So the reaction time go is this. This is the concept behind it. The fact that he's a smaller player means that he can connect from his brain to his body faster than every other big player because it's less distance to travel signaling wise. That's like a thing, yeah. yeah. So you always have a reaction time advantage over every big player. So that means that even if you aren't as explosive as that, you're gonna be able to take that first movement before they get you. Reaction time, go here, hold this. It's gonna be like this. You're, you're, you're playing, and you press it. And then you catch it. And then you just go. Just go for your reaction time. You beat them with your reaction time, which means that you just have to connect your body very quickly. So, so pass it to me. Alright, reaction time, go. There you go. I know you can do better than that. That was a little cross. Just go as soon as you get it. Ready? Go! Yeah! Time, now I want you to do this. I want you to grab step, then just go. Grab step and then go immediately. Okay? Grab step and then just go. Yeah, yeah. There you go. Good quickness. Good quickness. Let's go. One more. One more. Grab step. There you go. Alright, now just go. I want you to do Second, and then you go. You see what I'm saying? It's like a mind, but it's like. 
go. And they're, they're gonna be like, oh, he didn't go, so they're like stationary, and then you just suddenly explode. Okay, so you explode after you pause. There you go, go faster. React faster after the pause. So do that in one second pause. There you go, there you go. I want you to jab step really hard one way, and then you see the defender shifting, and then you go the other way, okay? But, but the, all this is about how, how much they threaten, they fear your drive, okay? So you really gotta believe you're gonna go that way when you jab, okay? Oh! That was beautiful. That's what I'm talking about. One more time, one more time. Jab step the other way, baby. There you go. Alright, now I want you to do this. I want you to take a jab step and then they're gonna react. And I want you to pump fake. You gotta believe you're gonna shoot them. Even when you drop shoot, you gotta believe you're gonna drive. Okay? You see them react, then you react. Okay? Alright, go. Good shit, good shit, good shit, good shit. Every time you do it, you believe you're gonna do it. Yeah. And if you react off of them reacting off of you. Yeah. Okay? So if they don't react, then you go, okay? Slow pump fake, slow pump fake. You really got to go shoot that. Don't rush anything. Excellent, excellent. Alright, Steve, so that was some moves off the um, triple threat position. Now we're going to do moves off the dribble, which is possibly even more important because you're a point guard. Because you're going to be bringing the ball up and dribbling it all the time. You're going to pick your moves all the time. So all these moves are going to be good, okay? So first, we're going to start with the skip dribble. So I want you to get in an explosive stance, okay. like you're going to really drive, okay? okay? Now I want you to skip. At any point, you can blow by the ball, okay? So every time you believe, you might go blow by the ball. Basically, the key for that is if they don't skip with you, if they're not ready to explode with you, you go right by them. If they do skip with you, and they're ready to explode with you, then you change direction. Okay? Now I want you to make a move where you violently change direction. Uh, I'm going to 
move that I know works for sure. Okay? This is what you do. You take a dribble, and then you take a side step like this. Side step like this. Okay? And then while you're taking a side step, you also look the other way. Like that. It's misdirection. They read your eyes and your feet, and they, they just take a step to where you go. If they don't bite, then you just go. Or you just, you, I mean, you cross over, you cross over. Alright? I'm going to try that. in your right hand, yeah. but your left foot and your goes the other way. That goes the other way. So I believe that when you dribble, the more you steps you can take while you're dribbling, the more dangerous you are because when you're going side steps, back steps, they have to come to you if they respect your shot. Yeah. They're gonna respect your shot, right? Yeah. And then when you take side steps, take like big steps. You know, like the, the higher level, the bigger the steps they take. So I want you to take these side steps and back steps, just like here, you're using your creativity. Like that, and then draw them to you, and then act like you're gonna shoot. You really believe you're gonna shoot, but then when they come too close, hezzy, go. So this is the hezzy go, okay? Well, I want you to do it, taking steps while your ball is hanging there. <laughs> go, go, go. Side steps. You gotta look up, you gotta look up. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta pretend you're gonna shoot. If you don't look up, I'm not gonna believe it. Bigger steps, bigger steps. There you go. And then, and then when they fall for it, then you, I want you to go, okay? So right now it's not that convincing for me. Come a little bit closer. Come a little bit closer and then do it. There you go. Lots of big spaces. Your shooting pack is not convincing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are you really going to believe you shoot? There you go. Yeah. That one was the best one. That was the best one. One more time, one more time. Let's hit it. Let's hit it. And then I'll go. 
Go in and out, and then cross. Sell where you want me to go. All right. All right. One more, one more, one more. Oh, yeah. That's what I'm talking about. That's good stuff, good stuff, good stuff. So we talked about, you always remember, your ability as a player is determined by how great of a open looks you can get all game and how great of a looks you can get for your teammates all game, right? And obviously, it's the same thing on defense, how much you can lock that down, the open looks, right? So, we talked about being a small guard, being able to get into the lane every time, and that being a strong mindset. Because even if you can get these looks out from here, when, when you're starting the game as a point guard, you want to get your, everybody involved. And one of the best ways to do that is to just get to the rim at will and then pass it out, right? So, I want you to know that the, the concept behind Going all the way is also the fact that when you do actually don't go all the way and you end up pulling up from the mid range, it's your ability to get off the ground more quickly than the, all the other players that determines how open of a look you're going to get. The reason for that is because somebody that's 6'6 six, six, jumps half your body, half your jump, they're still going to block it. But it's the fact that when Isaiah jumps, he's already there before they can even jump. So you always see him already elevated. Then, then they jump, and that's why it's always open. So, what I mean by that is the stretch shortening cycle, the plyometrics, has to be really advanced. So, so basically, let me show you. We gotta come to this bench right here, and we gonna we gonna explain how plyometrics works. So, when you're up here, you don't have to start this high, but you're probably an advanced enough athlete that can start this high. So I, I'm gonna start probably like here because I haven't done this in a while. So I start right here. Well, I'm gonna just do it here for now, just to show it. And then if I can land on the ground, making no noise at all, that means that my muscles and my tendons are able to absorb all the force that I'm putting in, and then spring upward. That means that, that means that if it lands with no noise, it can spring upward very fast. So you just go from an elevated distance, no noise. No noise. And then when you start, when your nerves start getting really tired, it's gonna start making noise. And then the, the higher you can jump up from, and then with no noise, the better your plyometric ability is. And then when you do stuff like that, you're gonna just realize like you just feel more springy when you get out here. So it's, it's it's your ability to elevate quicker than your opponents, and the quick trigger that's ultimately gonna you know determine how how open of a shot you're gonna get. Of course. When we go even more into that, then the biomechanics and, and your athletics, all that stuff, of course, that matters. So that's just levels to it. But I mean, even just with your ability, I think if you just have a lot of plyometric ability, it'll just allow you to get the clearer looks off. But ultimately, you have to be able to elevate off the ground very quickly. 
Okay, so so plyometric is something that we can work on in the future. Okay. Um, so now now we're gonna do some athleticism tests because I believe that you can improve your athleticism by doing the movement a lot. So so what we're gonna do is we're gonna do one of the most basic ones, which is how quickly can you get from the three to the basket? So I want you to stand on the baseline there, and I want you to run past that three-point line as fast as you can, and I'm gonna time you, okay? Without the ball face, okay? So stand right here, behind you, and now I want you to, as soon as you cross that line as fast as you can, I'm gonna, I'm gonna time you, okay? I'm gonna stop you, okay? Ready? Go. Run. As soon as you go, I'll just click it, okay? One point one six. Let's see if you can get a second. Okay. See if you can get a second. One point two two. Try to go faster. Try to go faster. It's good speed though. Try to go faster. Point two five. Yeah, it was slow. One more time, one more time. One point one six was your best time so far. Alright, ready? That was one point two five too. If you think you can beat that, you can keep going. If you don't, then you can stop right there. Wow. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. Look fast too. Alright, three more tries. One point zero three. Uh uh. That was really fast. Alright, two more tries. Let's see if you can beat that. Yeah, good job. Alright, last one, last one. Let's see if you can be 1.03. 1.03 again. Two. Right, right, that's a really good time. That's a really good time. Alright. So, I want you to make some moves that I taught you, and then slow with the move. For example, like this. That was under a second, but it's because you already took the step. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's okay. That just looks nice. That's, that's, that's what matters. All right, just do like a crossover other way, and then let's see. But you gotta start at the baseline after you cross over. That was under a second too. Yeah. All right. So he's good with the he's good with the ball. He's good with the ball in his hands. All right. So we gonna talk about we gonna talk about some concepts, okay? So there's the reaction time, right? how quickly you can connect your body. There's the rate of force development, which is like how quickly you can instantly get all your force off. It looks like pretty good, but it's like some 
sometimes it looks like you take a pause or something like that. Yeah. But like hand cleans, box jumps, that type of stuff can help that stuff. And then the movement efficiency is just doing the movement over and over again, like with all those moves, getting faster at it. And then just physical strength is like you're around. Okay, the more you physical strength you have, the more you can push off the ground with your strength. And um, now it's like this. As a small guard, bro, you gotta be lethal in transition and fast break. But this, this stuff, all this stuff that I'm telling you, it's all about what's up here. Because you know what to do, you know what to work on, what to look for in games to do. Alright? So, we go test your three quarters court speed, and then after that, we go do it with the ball. And after that, you go show me your fast break and transition ability as far as just the speed. So, so basically, I mean, you heard like one man fast break, right? Like Kemper Walker stuff? Yeah, so like, yeah, yeah. So, so like, that type of ability for a small guy, I feel like it's very important because it's, it's a huge part of basketball. They talk about transition baskets, fast break baskets, all the time off turnovers, all that stuff. So, I'm gonna test your three quarter. Are you recovered enough? Okay, so I want you to, I want you to go right there so you don't just start around the three quarter area. Get it, get it. Whenever you're ready, start running all the time. Three point two eight. That's really good though. Four down to that's really good time. Alright, so we got three point two eight, let's see if you can beat that. Is the last one. Nine. Just pick up the ball and run past the line at the end. like this is real basketball uh -huh. and then just do one where you're dribbling like crisscross yeah. like, like like you avoid some guys and now I want you to finish up the rim okay Change one more. That was good speed, bro. That's really good. Alright. Alright, so now we're gonna finalize right here. Alright. So what are the main concepts that you learned today? What's the best way to get wide open looks from the perimeter? It's because of what? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And then when it comes to the wing pick and roll and the top of the key pick and roll, 
you, you understand just how to face them every time. And you gotta say it. You gotta just say it. Yeah. And if they're your teammates, they're gonna they're gonna listen to you. Yeah. But before we finish, there's one more thing that I forgot to tell them about that I, I think is crucial. Okay. So I think this is about like killer instinct. or like kind of crazy they, they do this with well. the ball. I think you have to you have to do this. Alright? So what's your what's our weakness on the perimeter is that we get shot over on the perimeter, right? So smaller guards get shot over on the perimeter, we also might get posted up in mismatch. It happens. Even if we're strong if we still get posted up, get shot over all that stuff. So how do we make up for that on defense? You gotta know that you always have the advantage time it's 94 feet you have the advantage you know why because even if they're bigger and more explosive than you you have the better guessing because you're smaller you have the better reaction time so so you're wearing their legs out and you can react faster than even if so before they can even get their speed off you're already harassing them out here so so i believe that you gotta do this this is what you gotta do every time every time you know you're playing trying out you pin the person's strong hand. What's my strong hand? Strong hand. Yeah. Yeah, it's my right hand, right? So, pin it with here. Just, just stay close, stay close. So, so I'm coming down to the ball, and I'm right here. You said you have better endurance than almost anybody here, right? So, pin my, pin my right arm. So, 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 so now, now, now it's like this. Now you dictate where I go. Because if you're like this, then I'm gonna have to go there, and then you beat me to the spot. Go. Yeah. And then you do that, the whole game, the whole tryout, and you make a difference by turning it over, wearing them out, just not letting them take 15, 15 seconds, 10 seconds off the shot clock before they can even cross it, and getting it out of the point guard's hands. So, so if you're not doing that every time, then you're not maximizing your advantages as a smaller guard. All right, so let's try it once. Go. seconds of the shot clock so you, you gotta do that and you gotta you gotta be a killer with that yeah. and you gotta know that this hand and that's the thing with here even if they beat you it's not a big deal because they're not gonna they're not gonna score threat yeah and they're just gonna get tired the bigger they are the more tired they get and then you just recover if they beat you then you recover but it's, it's the aggressiveness without the fouling that's gonna really make a difference so that's the last thing i wanted to say all right bro thanks thanks man yeah, man. Appreciate it. yeah, yeah of course thank you. Thank you. Thank you.